Hi there, I'm Vanessa Bartlett and I'll be presenting on the Pros online prosperity show. Um, I'm a life, mind and body coach and today we'll be talking about how to improve your lifestyle and decrease stress and how to become more productive in your day through good health. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you Vanessa, the mind and body coach. Vanessa, how are you doing today? I'm really well. Thank you, Prosper. How are you doing? Fantastic. Well, obviously, I'm excited to have you on the show today because you know something, Vanessa, if you don't feel well, you can't do well. All right. So, um, the reason why I brought you on the show today is we are suffering from a lot of burnout. We're suffering from a lot of fatigue um, that, you know, results from our day-to-day -day activities, trying to run businesses so that they're profitable and enjoyable. And the reason why we're listening to Vanessa today, if you're in the audience right now, is because Vanessa has a vast, you know, understanding of what it actually takes to get in shape, stay in shape, and build a healthy and sustainable lifestyle that involves your body your mind um you know uh, both your body and your mind and vanessa has helped you know thousands of women um in her lifetime so they could transform their bodies through popular group classes personal coaching and she's also known to help clients reach their optimal level of health and also a greater awareness of um you know their mindset now you've had um a lot of tv Pre, um, you know appearances as well which means what you do show people and how you help people actually works now Vanessa thank you so much for your time um, you know today on the show tell us a little bit about how you got started um, on your personal uh, fitness journey what was happening at that time Sure. Well, if we take it right back years ago, I was actually watching aerobics Oz style as an eight year old. So getting up, watching the TV as a youngster, but fast forwarding a few years, um, had a successful personal training business in my early twenties, mobile personal training around Sydney. Um, and then kept doing that, working at various gyms, doing, you know, classes and personal training and, you know, small group clients and circuits and all of that stuff and doing heaps of exercise myself. But what happened was I hit a point um, in my late 20s where I hit burnout. So I basically had to stop everything for two years and figure out what was going on with me. I was exhausted. Um, my mood had gotten really low. My eating was really funny. Um, my mindset just wasn't ever clear. Um, so I went to various doctors to go, okay, well, what's going on here? I'm supposed to be, you know, this fit personal trainer in the fitness industry and I love health and exercise and all of that what's going on with me? So finally, I found out that I was going through adrenal fatigue, which is like a chronic fatigue type um, situation. So your adrenals are responsible for um, fight or flight mode in your body. You may have heard of that. So basically, um, in the old days, you are in fight or flight mode if you're chasing bears or something, right, in the jungle. But these days, we don't have to do that kind of thing. But what's happening is because stress and life and commitments and pressure just everyday living is getting to a lot of us. So your adrenals and other aspects of your body hit burnout point. So that's basically what happens to me for two years. Um, at that point, I had to stop all of my gym, um, fitness, and all of the health stuff I'd done for you know 15 years prior, um, and then go, well, what does it take to actually rebuild my own health? I have to go and research. I want to learn again from the basics what are the foods i should be eating each day to be happy and healthy what's going to fuel my body and get rid of this awful exhaustion that i was um, suffering from and, and a lowered immune system so what would rebuild my immune system what would give me a clarity in my mind again and get back that kind of en energy and bounce that people get from exercise because i wasn't getting that so that transitioned me to go okay well i've got to now look at other avenues for health and fitness I'm going to try out Pilates and yoga, um, you know, and Tai Chi and different things like that. So that kind of led me towards those modalities. And I just found straight away that doing Pilates type classes were able to kind of energize me and give me that zest back, but also help me feel like I'd still gotten a workout. So that's where I went, oh, there's something in this. This is kind of a nicer approach. I'm not getting as sore as I used to get from doing other exercises, but I was still able to maintain tone, like muscle tone, and keep my weight very healthy. 
and just start to feel in control of my well-being again. So since then, I've studied that, studied that extensively and um, it's now kind of my number one go-to method with um, a lot of my online and offline clients and, and people I work with. Absolutely. Thank you so much um, for that. Um, obviously, that's an extensive history right there. And you having been a, um, you know, a personal instructor, you would uh, maybe have a comment to this. Is there a direct relationship between exercising and success? Exercise what, sorry? Direct the, relationship between? Exercising and success in life. I believe so. I'll say yes to that. And the reason being is that physical fitness underpins every other aspect of your health. Okay. And good health underlies good relationships with yourself, your, your partner, your family, your work colleagues, your business colleagues. And then what happens when you're healthy and you've got energy and physical fitness, you can go and do what you need to do every day. You can go and work on your finances with a clear mind and a good plan. You can go and work on relationships because if you're fit and happy within yourself through good quality exercise that's balanced, it certainly filters over to other aspects of your life. I believe it's the pin. And actually Joseph Pilates, who was the gentleman who founded this technique back in the early 1900s, he was German. He worked um, with soldiers in the war, rehabilitated them. He basically said physical fitness is the prerequisite to happiness. Right. And so fast forward, you know, a couple of hundred years, we're in the midst of, you know, social media and so much more pressure and everything's online and offline and we're expected to be in so many places at once. What often people forget about is their own physical health and well-being. So it's like if, you do, if you're missing that part of yourself, what good is money? What good is relationships if you're feeling awful in yourself or if you're not body confident and um, energetic every day? Absolutely, because you can't do well if you cannot feel well. That's what I'm hearing from you um, there. Now, the thing that you major most in there, Vanessa, is holistic exercise. And um, you help people with health practices and you also went ahead and studied mind body connection and its power in healing and restoring, um, you know, health and energy. I thought when you go to the gym, all you do is lift heavy things, run on the treadmill, sweat a little bit, and that's exercise. It is exercise. You're not wrong. Um, but again, I think we've, we've shifted as, as a human race, there's more demands on us in society. So when demands increase on our physical and mental health, so to do our requirements for good health. So for example, if you're already, and it's nothing wrong, like go for a walk, go to the gym, do weights and, and, and walking and things like that and use the equipment. However, you've just got to know or understand, is it serving the purpose for where you're at physically? So for me, I was at burnout point years back. I had to stop that because it didn't feel right for me anymore because I already had too much stress. So what I'm noticing, the trend is with so many females and males just, just around the place in general, if you're already at a level of certain stress in the body, yes, you want to go to do exercise to release that energy, which is a great thing. But the holistic viewpoint is to go, okay, well, maybe today, instead of running for half an hour, which is pretty intensive on the body, if you just had a big day and you're stressed, why not do a few yoga stretches or Pilates moves that might you know, be less intensive on your physical body, which is already under pressure, but a little bit more of a gentle, holistic kind of way. Reduce that um, cortisol in the body, which is the stress hormone, and then also give you a bit more mental clarity. Because what I've realized too is today people need more mental clarity from their exercise and their health. Whereas before it used to be about let's just go, go, go and sweat, right? That's what everyone grew up with with what exercise should be. But now mental health is a concern too. So many more people have depression, anxiety. Um, I've worked with mental health patients in the Canterbury dis district and we got an award for innovation in healthcare, working with mentally ill clients in terms of, you know, schizophrenia, bipolar, anxiety, depression, helping them learn to meditate and do holistic Pilates based and stretching exercise to boost their moods, boost their confidence. So if it, 
you know, so it kind of, that holistic approach is, I feel, something that we all need a little bit more of. And just to look at your weekly exercise pattern and go, all right, maybe I'll do three days of weights, maybe two days a week. I'm pretty tired by Friday. I might do a, you know, yoga stretch or a Pilates type workout to get my muscles working, but also to get the mind-body connection and, and relieve that stress for the day. Absolutely. Um, great stuff right there because, you know, there's, that's why there's organizations like Are You OK? Because we might think that um, we are connected just because we've got a smartphone uh, in, our, in our hands. But, you know, humans still crave for that connection. And that's what is really causing a lot of, you know, the mental breakdowns that we are experiencing. Um, and, you know, people like yourself are able to assist, you know, while, um, you know, using holistic exercise um, you know, techniques. Now, you are now a mother, you are an entrepreneur, and um, you also obviously are practicing your exercises. Can you just walk us through how you manage to juggle all of those and while still remaining sane since we've spoken to you for 10 minutes, you haven't freaked out? <laughs> That's a very good point. My partner would disagree with you as he left with the baby in the stroller. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me get ready for this interview. I can't have the baby stuff in the interview. So yeah, Lincoln's about uh, six and a half months right now. And uh, to be honest, that was a whole other journey. So um, I, I was doing my Pilates and stretching as best I could all the way up until probably a few weeks before he was born. So I had to modify those exercises, but found that it was still nice to just, you know, gently work the arms and the legs, let the tummy have a bit of a rest, of course. Um, but then after the birth, I did have a quite a stressful birth where I almost fractured my coccyx. So the, my back was badly damaged. So I basically have had to rehabilitate myself the last um, six months. Uh, the first seven weeks or so, I could barely walk or sit or stand. So actually putting into place the basics of what I teach others when they're starting out, how to you know, properly connect with your core muscles, how to gently build your posture from the basics up. I had to go back to that myself and rehabilitate and actually use those basics and go, okay, that's all right. I've had this amazing baby, but the body has suffered a little. Let's build back up. So six and a half months on, I'm pretty good. I'm you know, 80% back there again and, and building up nicely due to the exercises I teach everyone. So I definitely practice what I preach with that in that regard. In regards to staying sane, I'd say scheduling helps as well um, in terms of, you know, children are unpredictable as we know. So look, I'll jump on the computer in the evenings or when he's asleep in the day as, as best I can and, and help clients and do my business duties. Um, at the same time, I'm, I value family time. So it has been this juggling act to go, all right, what's the best scenario I can create here with maintaining some good physical health? Um, I ask for help, you know, um, I'm lucky I do have my parents who can help with the baby or, you know, some of my partner's family. But at the end of the day, I want to be a great mum. So I'm trying to be a role model for him to go, you can still do a business, even though it's a bit more part-time. I've got a wonderful team of instructors taking some of my classes, which frees me up to do more online. Um, uh, programs for people and then you know having that schedule um, day to day or just week to week but also being flexible prosper you know sometimes I think as entrepreneurs we, we try and be too rigid and go okay we have to have this schedule set Monday to Sunday to achieve XYZ goals sometimes in life that's not always realistic and you may have days where things don't go to plan so learning to go okay that's fine I can pick off where I get um, pick up where I left off and have the, just having a bigger picture of your big goals in mind kind of helps you keep moving along. Um, but having a good daily plan of excellent food choices, lots of water, decent sleep where you can or meditation, and then that holistic exercise approach, listening to your body and doing things to build your posture, your core, um, and stretching out muscles when we're all on devices and computers all the time, right? So learning to, yeah, strengthen our back and, um, and our postural muscles. So there's a combination of things there. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you, got me. <laughs> you, you got me stretching now, you know, just as soon as you mentioned it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you mentioned, 
yeah, while you were talking, <laughs> while you were talking, you did mention that you've got online programs. Can you just walk us through what it is that people would be um, getting from you if they do sign up to any online program that you offer? Sure. So um, I've got a 10 week Pilates body fit program, which is a video program people can do at home. Um, a lot of people I've met simply don't have time anymore or the help that they need, you know, with family and so forth to make it into gyms, Pilates studios and face to face type classes. So I created a 10 week video progressing anyone from a beginner level up to a more intermediate to advanced level to build those postural muscles, core strength flexibility and muscle tone um, so that's that's my primary online program right now helping people within that um, and later this year I'll be working on an adrenal and chronic fatigue exercise recovery program to really help people build back their nutrition and, and fitness from a place of coming from that chronic fatigue or that high stress um, point where you can't do any other exercise Absolutely. Um, obviously, food becomes, you know, the fuel that you're going to be eating. So you keep referring to nutrition. Can you just point us towards, you know, maybe I'm, a, I'm sitting at my desk right now. What sort of foods would you recommend that somebody snack on just so that they maintain that optimal health and fuels that are needed for their body um, while I put away my chocolate and candy? <laughs> <laughs> stash that that stays on there yeah and that's allowed sometimes too you know it's not about being perfect it's allowing treats into your life otherwise life is boring but um actually i said something really cool the other day i made some um some little protein balls made out of macadamia nuts cashew nuts dates and a little bit of rice syrup. So it's actually on my blog, on vanessabhealth.com. Go to the blog. It's the most recent one. So making little things like that, it took five minutes, you know, just chopping up the ingredients, putting it in a food processor. You're getting some healthy fats from your nuts, the cashews, macadamias, and some nice energy and fiber and vitamins from the dates. And, it, it, you know, it's, it's a little kind of healthy snack you can sit on your desk rather than having processed sugars. Um, I snack a lot on vegetables as well. So I'll cut up celery, carrots, um, banana, fruits, I have a lot of fruit. So I'd rather make a plate of that for myself at, you know, three or four o'clock when we're getting a bit tired. Um, if you're doing computer work, have like your little protein balls or have some nuts, fruit, olives, um, things with good fats, um, and then carrots and celery sticks as well with some salsa is always a bit tasty, but low fat. Um, having a good breakfast as well, is, is quite important. Having said that, I don't think it's important that you have breakfast at a certain time. Do what works for your body. So for example, if I'm up early, I um, will often have a green tea, something to kind of kickstart, sometimes a coffee, and then some nice fresh fruit quite often and muesli. And then later on at say 10, 30, 11, I'll have a big brunch and that works well for me. So I don't have a set, you know, breakfast, snack, lunch, dinner kind of thing. I've worked out, well, actually, this is when I feel I need my big amount of food. So I have something really solid at, you know, 10, 30, 11, like an early brunch type thing that gets me through. Um, I think as well, people begin to think they have to be very regimented with that, um, being business owners or just being busy people. Listen to your body, you know, listen to what you need when you need it. If you tune in and if you kind of do some meditation and go, what is it that I feel like? You might feel like a packet of chips. Look, some days that's going to happen. But if that's happening and those cravings are happening for you know salty, fatty, sugary foods, you're missing some vitamins. So pull back and bring it back to basics and go, okay, have I had three to four pieces of fruit today? Have I had five lots of veggies or some salad? Have I had a piece of lean protein or some fish or tuna? And if you're ticking off those basic boxes to start with, that's a pretty good start. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, like I keep repeating and saying, you can't do well if you actually do not, um, you know, feel well. You did um, allude to your website a little bit earlier on, but I don't think people would have gotten it. Can you just repeat the website where those um, academia recipes are? Sure. VanessaBHealth.com. 
Okay, I will be putting it in the show notes um, over there and so that people can, you know, get, get a hold of you. Now, Vanessa, obviously, we could go on and on. You've got a wealth of knowledge, um, you know, that you could impart on us. Um, but you would also understand that this is the beginning of the year. We're probably in week number two of the second month. People were just been on holiday and um, maybe people made resolutions to, you know, have a healthy year. Um, and, you know, you know, have a smash in 2018, but now in, in about a week or so, it's going to be Valentine's and it's going to be chocolates and then it all goes downhill from then on. What sort of advice do you normally give considering you have taken yourself on a three month, three, six week, six month journey, um, you know, of recovery and literally uh, rehabilitating yourself. And so that would have been a strong mindset and, um, you know, you know, zeal that got you through what sort of um, advice or, you know, just journey tidbits can you give to people that are, you know, on, on, on a journey to, 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 to a healthy uh, existence? Sure. Um, the thing that works for me the best is always reviewing your goals. So having some kind of diary or, you know, note taking device or whatever works for you or a notebook, you know, I often like putting pen to paper for goals because something, there's something a bit different about tangible goals rather than everything on devices, right? So actually going at the start or at the end of the month, which would be, you know, last week, okay, how did January go in my fitness, in my health, in my relationships? how am I going with my business, my work or whatever goals are important to you, your family. Um, and just going, okay, this is a few great things that happened. Maybe two, three, two or three things per category that happened well for you that were successful. And then a couple of things that you went, okay, well, I've learned this lesson here. And it's not about beating yourself up. It's just kind of going, okay, let's just reflect on this. What can we improve? Because in, you know, six months, I do want to be doing 20 push-ups, for example, or I do want to have that promotion at work, or I do want to have X amount of clients in my business, whatever those goals are for you personally, it's just about constantly reviewing. So even rehabilitating myself in the last six and a half months, there's been times where I've been really down going at the start, I was thinking, oh my gosh, if I can hardly walk after having a baby, how am I ever going to do Pilates and exercise again, which is the one thing that keeps me sane, that gives me my medicine, you know? Um, so taking things step by step, wherever you're at, if you're a high achiever or if you're, you know, if you're in a bit of a slump, it doesn't matter. Just day by day, just look at where you're at, take a step back and go, you know what? Life's pretty good. We're actually pretty all lucky to be here. Um, you know, be grateful as well for where you're at. Some days it will suck. That's life. We know that. Um, but yeah, just having that review um, monthly, I would say, is really handy because, as you said, the news resolutions have kind of filtered off now. It's into the second month of the year. Have people even remembered what they wanted to work on, or was it just a fantasy that lasted for a few days? So, in any aspect of your life, health, family, relationships, work, let's just go right. Well. Let's highlight where do we want to head in February with a couple of these things. What's one thing I could do this week to just work on my health a little more? You know what? Maybe I'll go try um, and do one of my YouTube 10-minute videos if that's all it takes, you know? Do something simple, but keep it simple day by day, step by step, and just be grateful for where you're at as well. Absolutely. I like that. The whole keep it simple and, um, you know, take it a day as it comes because, you know, we don't actually realize that, you know, dedicating ourselves to just work can lead us to actually failing um, in life because you now have a lack of motivation. You, you're distracted from your physical and mental health. You know, like you, you mentioned earlier on that, you know, the more uh, fatigue you get, it affects your, your mental health and well-being. And, you know, without vigor, we can't strive for things that we actually want, such as our career and meeting our family needs. So I can't thank you enough, Vanessa, for shedding the light on things that may seem trivial, um, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives and, um, you know, helping us have a healthier existence, which will lead us to having businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Great stuff.